this is Al McGee with yeticket.com. Well, I'm here with Ilaria Matanani, and she is, well, a very good person to know and to meet. I'm so glad to talk to her, even though it's on Zoom, but I'm still happy to talk to her. But we're going to talk about her new film called Stronger for Life. And well, we're gonna take you through that journey and what's in the film and, and the documentary. How you doing, Alaria? I'm doing great, thank you. Great intro. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you very much. Well, first of all, let's talk about uh, what the documentary is about. Why don't you tell us what it's about? Um, the documentary is about uh, finding a way to fight challenges that life presents to us. Um, at the time when I shot the documentary, my challenge was cancer. I was diagnosed with cancer and I was diagnosed- What type of cancer? With, I had breast cancer. Okay. I was told that I had breast cancer, which I think everybody, when they hear the C word, like you feel like your entire world kind of comes down because you just don't want to hear that word, you know, into you. But also I've been, you know, physical exercise, um, was vegetarian, never smoked. I mean, I've been a really, really healthy person. So it was really like, it really hit me so hard. I'm like, what, what do you mean cancer? I, me, I have cancer. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm strong, I'm healthy. I'm like, I'm like this kind of thing. So I decided to document what would it be like for someone like me that always inspired other people to find strength through hard training that's my philosophy. I am some right. of the trains people. I've trained myself my entire life. And, you know, all of a sudden it's like, you know what? You show, you show up to your own, uh, to your own challenge and see if, you know, everything that you've worked for, everything that you inspire other people to be strong, if it really, you know, is something that works for yourself. And, you know, we decided to not knowing what my journey was going to be. I had no idea right. what be told the breast cancer meant i did not know if it meant chemo if it meant operation if it meant this and how that would impact my professional life my emotional life and how would i go about it and that's the story around this well you know also when you discovered that you had cancer and you explained what i've never been sick i i've never been to the doctor and as you said that yeah. but you seem surprised that this happened to you because well the the, your philosophy of life yeah. and you are very very healthy beautiful person and you know mm -hmm. and that happened to you You seem so surprised why I was, was that yeah I was very surprised and I realized first of all cancer like any disease doesn't discriminate you know it's I I think you go through different phases first you're surprised then you get angry I'm like why me and why me that I'm supposedly like doing all these healthy good things and I've been doing it for 20 years but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you know what? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you have some sort of a disease or you have some sort of a challenge and how are you going to go about it? Are you going to cry? Are you going to like stay in your little hole? Are you going to try to, you know, can for me it was cancer. I could have crossed the street and somebody could have just mowed me over with a car. You know, that yeah. is, there is no, I think reasoning why it happens to you or what happens. That's not the point is how you deal with it. That's really matters. Yeah. And, and, and in your documentary, in my opinion, because I'm a cancer survivor myself. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, prostate kind of... cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that later because we'll it's... talk about your father a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but when you discover that and things like that, and, and in the documentary, you really showed your journey and what you had to decide to do. But not only that, what you wanted to do to, well, to keep living. Because that's one thing I like about you and this documentary. You didn't say, whoa, whoa, is me. Well, let me hit it and let me keep doing what I'm going to do also. That's one thing I enjoyed about that uh, documentary, uh, Stronger for Life. And that's how you felt, right? I felt, I mean, I was like, at some point, the the very thing that always made me strong, which was exercise and, you know, and just kind of like grind it every day. Yeah. Was the worst thing for me to do because I couldn't do it. I could not. You know, you know what it's like after, you know, I had an operation and it was very invasive and, and it was hard to just even like walk around and just do stuff. But um, you just have to put your, you have to push yourself. You have to continue doing what you can. Well, you push yourself and, you know, in the beginning of the documentary, you show 
Well, in just one day, you had like five different classes and in and, 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 and different parts of New York City. That's one thing I love about New York City. You can travel everywhere in New York City just with public transportation. You don't need to spend money on a car and things like that. But you, you showed that, hey, this is what I do. And you showed us that. And I was like, wow, I'm very impressed with that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's it's what I do. My life is is you know teaching people, teaching crowds. Where I'm lucky I'm in your city that in a day I can hit a lot of people in different places, like you said, without a car, great subways mm -hmm. <laughs> all over the place. And that's what I've done. And the community, you know, receiving me after I had cancer and everything and being there, sweated with me, going through this journey together, that was a really powerful experience. Yeah. yeah. It, it sure was, I, you know. Now, when the doctor told you you had a lump on your breast, uh, your face and things like that, when she told you that, you seemed so mystified. You seemed so out of control. And in fact, like you, you're not in control anymore. Is that how you felt? Completely. I think one of the biggest challenge of being told you have cancer is that for the first time in my life, I really did you exactly correct. I felt completely out of control. I am the kind of person that sets a stage. I, right. I, I teach, I tell people, I you know I live with a microphone over my head. Uh -huh, I tell uh -huh. people what to do. I do it with you. I sweat every day together. It's a, it's a journey that we always do together, but I guide the journey. I'm in charge of it. And all yeah. of a sudden, like, I'm not in charge of it anything anymore i don't know what's going to happen what i need to i i know i knew nothing i knew nothing it's true yeah. it's losing control and now you got to follow the instructions of of your doctors and and hospital and things like that and now you're feeling you know you're not in control but what but what kept you stable was it your family like your brother your mother did they help you to stay stable during this process. That's one thing I admired about your mom. She came there from Italy, from Florence, Italy. Very wonderful mom. You got a beautiful mom. I have uh, an amazing mom. I have an amazing uh, mom. Um, it was very was it helpful. Them? I think when you go through cancer, which now you know, um, to have somebody by your side that is there when you have those dark moments, like because you're gonna you're gonna have those dark moments where you think. Oh, you know, where, where is it going to go? What is going to, what is it really going to be of me? What is going to be left of me? What is going to, you know, was, and I'm going to die, you know, like all, obviously, you know, kind of thing. Those are, you know, people, my mom and my brother were um, really helpful. Although, you know, they left, they don't live with me. They live in Italy. So, right. you know, you have to find regardless some strength inside. And my strength was the strength that I built throughout all my years of, you know, of training and hard work is a discipline that you have that makes you when you don't want to get up in the morning because you feel sick or you don't feel or you're in a, you know really in a depressed mood that discipline makes you go no matter what you know at some point there's going to be no motivation when you are in you know when you are in your worst right. day, there's no motivation so what kept me is really the discipline yeah and also and this is really the first time that you had really endured pain in your body and you had pain in your body for over two months and yeah. you uh you said wow this is the first time this has happened to me uh, you want to talk about that a little bit having yeah. all that pain in your body uh yes you know there the, the, i'm used to physical pain because you know as a martial artist or whatever it's it's but again that's the kind of a choice that you make to have that kind of pain right the pain that comes because you have a disease and you don't have any control over it it's a very different pain. And it, it's, it's interesting that you brought it up because as a person, I was like, Elida, you used to have pain. You used to pain. What, you know, I wanted to like say to myself, just like, come on, grow up, deal with it. But it's a, it's a different pain and it hits you very differently. And again, you have to dig inside and you find some sort of like one step after the other, one step after the other, you have to tell, listen, it's going to get better. And if it's not, you're doing everything you can to make it better. And you just oh yeah, and you, and you had and but not only your family though, you also have a few friends, but also you your group of students and things like that. They really cared about you because yeah. you you know you interviewed a, a couple of them yes. in the documentary, but they really love you and things like that. And now let's let's talk about your family. Uh, well, let's go back. Let's go to the year uh, that you found out about your father. Yeah, your father so I was. Yeah, that was a, not a good year. That, because I as, I was, as I was getting 
just finished my uh, my basically you know started my you know finished my procedures and you know I had still more operation to go so I'm dealing with my cancer and I'm dealing with still like is it going to come back? Is it, is it spread to different tissues? You know, you go through all of these things when you have right. cancer and it's, it's never over. It's never done. You're never done, but it was very, still very raw because it was like just, I think five weeks after my operation. And then my father was like, um, you know, I think they found something. I have prostate cancer. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, dad. I'll travel to Italy as soon as I can. I think this is a curable disease. Well, it turned out that it wasn't prostate and it, you know, it was a much bigger deal. And my father only survived, I think, three months, and that was it. Not only oh, uh, wow. yeah, that was it. from the day that they told him that. So God, you know, God bless him that he didn't suffer too much. But it's it's an ugly disease. You just kind yeah. of like really yeah. realize that one life is really fragile. To just you know enjoy and make the most of it because it goes like that. It does, but you know, but again, because of your exercise and things like that, do you feel that really helped you to survive because of what, you know, you put yourself through all these years, you know, creating power strike and things like that well, with, with your cancer? Absolutely. So while I had the first stage when I was told that I had cancer, that I got angry, I'm like, why me? I'm so healthy. Okay, so cancer comes. No, we don't know. Well, uh, you, you, you get it no matter what. But at least the fact that I had such a healthy lifestyle helped me with recovery, helped me with going through everything that happens after cancer, because there's a lot of medicines, which I'm still taking. There's a lot, you know, the procedure per se, it's, right, it's a tough right. thing. Um, I went back to the gym and I went back to my community. It was too fast. I was a little crazy in that sense. I really wanted to prove, I think myself, not anyone else. I really pro wanted to prove myself that I was still strong and that I could do things. So, so I went back at it, you know, in, you know, doing, mm -hmm. I should have waited a little longer. All my doctors told me and, you know, I paid the price for it, but um, yes, having had a healthy lifestyle really helps you. Yeah. Aftermath. And, and, and let's go back to your family a little bit. Your mom though, she's, she's, is she your strength? I know you are a daddy's girl. Cause I have a daughter. She's 36, I'm a daddy's girl. but, but, uh, your mom, she seemed to be the strength of all you guys. Uh, talk about that a little bit, because I really admire her. Yeah. You know, she's an Italian mom. Italian moms are, they're like elephants. They, she, <laughs> they are the strength of everything. The women, you yeah. know, they are, they, yeah. that's, no, God bless her. I mean, I, I am a daddy's girl, but my mom is, it's, yeah, she went through that with me and she flew. I mean, she's no young. Yeah, yeah. She's almost 80. And, you know, when she came and she came and she took the plane, she traveled, you know, on her own. And she's like, I'm there. And she stayed with me and she helped me. And then two months later, she's dealing, you know, with juicing food for my dad because he's sick. And she's a strong woman. God bless yeah. her. Really, she's And amazing. she's a great cook. Oh, you I, have, she, I, I, she I, finds her piece in that. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. And also, you spend uh, Christmas there with with your family in, in Italy. Man, that's a, that's wonderful because you, you can't get that food like that anywhere because it's your mom. <laughs> anywhere, anywhere. I always try. I actually am leaving in three days, and I'm going to visit finally after all the pandemic okay. and everything. I have not seen my mom. I usually we see each other every three months. Because I always go there. I mean, that's my family. I don't have family in the United States. So even though I'm a, I live here and all my things are in the United States, but my family's there. So I always go. And when I go, she feeds me. She cooks. She does. And I <laughs> cannot wait to go. I cannot oh, wait to go. That is so wonderful. Now I have interviewed uh, a few women who had uh, survived from breast cancer, and the stories are always different, but. For example, if there's one young woman, she was married and she had had a double mastectomy, yep. but her husband didn't think she was a full woman. Do that come into your head? That, do you feel that something missing within you that you're not a full woman or no, I am a woman? Absolutely not even the second I'm not a full woman, even though my boobs tried to kill me and I had to get rid of them. Okay, fine. Or at least one, I had a mastectomy. No, it did not. It did not dawn on me for a second that I would lose, you know, my womanhood, but it right. is physically it's, it's, 
I think at the beginning you are like for everything, like you're ready, you're like, okay, right. the cars, the things. Once you start living with it, it, you know, it's, there are consequences, but the fact that I'm alive and now it's, it's fine. Amazon's used to cut their own breasts just to be able to, you know. <laughs> to oh, really? Country. I didn't know yes. that. Yeah. The, wow. My brother told me that that was his consolation. <laughs> when I went to the hospital, it was like, Ladia, remember the Amazons used to cut their own breasts so they could, I was like, okay, I don't really want to do that, but. <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. Oh, they really <laughs> survived that, didn't they? Wow, yeah. they were very powerful. Yeah, they were powerful. So no, oh, I, I, it's powerful. okay. Whatever physically needs to be done, I'm very lucky. Yes. Okay, let's, let's get back to you and, and your past. You, you talked about when you were a little girl, you had so much energy, but you didn't know what to do when you were a kid and your family didn't know either. Talk a little bit about that. Because I was a little bit like that when I was a kid. I had so much energy and I wanted to do this and do that. And, but, you know, they sit down, sit down, you know, that's what I got. But you seem like you didn't get that. No, I didn't get to sit down. And also, luckily enough, we had a garden. So it was outdoor and outside all the time and playing outside. Um, but I did also from as a, as a young you know, girl, I always wanted to do martial arts. I really, I had books that I would look at the pictures and I just was like smelling them, looking at them. And I was like loving the uniform, the white, the belts. I don't know. I think maybe in another life I was something because it's, it was too early for me to, I was like five years old. I couldn't even read. And I just wanted to be a march, but that I was not allowed to do. So wow. they did send me to ballet school, which it was not quite the same. It was not what I wanted. I didn't like the outfit. I did not want it to wear a tutu. And right. but it did help later on in life because as soon as I could, I'm like, I'm back into martial arts. <laughs> yeah, and and, so, yeah. And, you, and you had your sensei Edwards on there. Man, that guy nice. was like, he's a great teacher and a very he's good nice. person to know. Oh my God, am I like my second dad? I've been with Edwin for sensei Edwin for 30 years. Yep. And, uh, you know, we connected when we were both much younger and he was, uh, you know, it's, and he took me through a lot of amazing training. I've done other style. He also was always generous to say, study with as many sensei as you can go and learn, go, you know, and he was a blessing for me. Always has been. Has and also been. you incorporate some martial art techniques in your exercise classes too. Now, how they do the class like they are, they are based on martial arts? All of the programs that I create. Oh yeah, are based, yeah. Because you know, I was into fitness because I loved you know obviously training, but I would never invent something that one I don't connect with, two that I'm not an expert at, and three just because it's a you know fashionable or trendy thing. I started to do this kicking and punching and martial arts before. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Taibo was famous. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And, you know, and but I was a woman and I was a woman in your city doing it. But so, no, all my programs are based on either martial arts uh-huh. or s- strength training, which, are the, you know, I again, I only do what I love and what I can feel that I can really give an exp- experience, a real experience to people, not inventing stuff. And I've been Man, doing it for 25 I, years. I haven't changed one thing. Yeah. It's still the and same. I, and I can tell you love it. I said, oh, my, look at that obsession she has. Oh, I wish I had that. You really love that. Well, love finally, that. final yes. question is this. <laughs> What's next? I know we just went through the pandemic. I know it's maybe, you know, a little bit rough for you because they closed down gyms and things like that. So what's next for you? Um possibly having a space where I will offer all the programs that I do through different gyms, all in under one roof, you know, something that I started working on, then I got hit with, you know, cancer, and then I started working on again, and then was my father death, and then uh, the pandemic, so it's been like, the universe has really put a lot of breaks on me, but uh, it's it's time to have my own home, I have a very, oh, okay. strong my, the pandemic was actually not to, it was hard, but it wasn't bad. I started doing everything virtually and I can go on and do it virtually. And I just want to reconnect unvirtually with people. So that's in the plan. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Laria. Thank I can talk to you for time. another two hours. Thank but you. you know, when I come to New York, I'm going to look you up and try to take a class or something like that. Please, please, right? please, please. It will be my I honor. I will, because you really inspired me. And I'm sure that you will inspire more people when they see your documentary 
stronger for life, which comes out in July. Yes. And so, man, I, that's why I wanted to interview you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Peace be with you. Peace to you. Thank you so much.